everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here, and today we are going to learn everything we can about Velcro rollers. I mean, guys, Velcro rollers are everywhere. They're on TikTok, they're on Instagram. They are making a comeback. I think the big kind of 90s blowout is having a comeback. It is time. And I was thinking the Velcro rollers are probably new for a lot of you. So I wanna take it back to hair school and teach you guys just the basics of how to use Velcro rollers. I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that you guys ask me on my Instagram about how like to not get them stuck and tangled in your hair and not have frizzy snarly ends. And I'm gonna show you guys, I think four different roller sets you can do with Velcro rollers. So we have a lot of ground to cover. Once you watch this, you will be an expert. Oh, we should acknowledge that in today's video, Anna Laura and I are festooned with band-aids. Mine's here, <laughs> right here. Mine's here, and I have this one here. Mm -hmm. And one on my hand too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I don't know what planet is in what station, but we have been quite clumsy. <laughs> of course, if you're excited about today's video, don't forget to hit that like button to help support my channel. And you know, let me know that you want more hair encyclopedia type videos. And of course, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee Melissa. We learn about everything hair care and styling related so that you can just love your hair every single gosh darn day. All right, that being said, let's go to school. <laughs> So Velcro rollers, plastic roller with Velcro on it. The Velcro is there to help to grab your hair so that it just easily adheres to the roller and you can roll it right up on dry hair. The benefit of this over your typical plastic roller is that it gives you just enough grip that you're able to wrap the hair up easily without wetting the hair or anything beforehand. You can get them at your local beauty supply store, some drug stores, and definitely online. I will link a few of my favorites below. I do always make sure to list all of the products for you guys, and I usually use affiliate links so that I get a very small commission if you purchase through my link. You absolutely are under no obligation to do so, but if you do want to support my channel and you do want Velcro rollers, there's that information. The benefit of using something like a Velcro roller is that it lets your hair set to cool in its curled shape. And that's important because your hair doesn't fully form the curl when it gets hot, it forms the curl once it cools down from getting hot. It's the process of breaking and then reforming your hydrogen bonds. That sounds scary. These little bonds, they just like open and close like a door. It's not a big deal. When they get wet, when they get hot, they open. When they get dry or cold, they close. But we can use that to our advantage with the Velcro roller to help our curls last better and achieve bigger volume. So that's what they are. Now let's talk about how to use them. And to do that, I am gonna take it back to what I learned in cosmetology school very quickly because I think this is really gonna help you. I'm gonna run through a lot of terms really quickly. I have been adding timestamps to my description box if you're not into like all the nitty gritty behind the scenes, you can totally skip to when I'm actually using the rollers. I give you permission. But for my hair nerds, let's get into this. Let's start with the anatomy of a curl. Basically, you have three parts to every curl. You have the stem, which is the area from your root to the first arc of the curl. The stem is important because it determines the direction that the curl is going to fall. Its position also impacts the amount of volume that your hair can have, because if the stem is pointing up this way, you're gonna have a lot of volume, whereas if it's pointing down this way, you're gonna have a lot less. This is also where we typically end up with creases from our clips. You never want to clip over the stem. The stem should always be perfectly straight, whatever direction it's going, and uninterrupted. The curl is all of the hair that goes around the roller, and the size of the curl is determined by the size of the roller. The bigger the roller, the bigger the curl. I think we all knew that one. And then we have the base. The base is the rectangular section of hair that you pick up to curl and then wrap on a roller. And the position of the roller in relation to that base section is going to tell you how much volume your hair is going to have because it impacts the stem. It's like the stem plus the base together shows you the volume. And the most important thing about the base is that it always, always needs to be the size of the roller no bigger, okay? We're gonna talk more about that in a sec. So that is the anatomy of a curl. Now there are three basic ways to place a curl and that is on base, half base, and off base. For on base, you direct the hair to an obtuse angle. I always say like a unicorn horn if you're doing your little mohawk section here. And then you roll it back down and that ends up putting the roller directly on the section that you took to curl. That's gonna give you the max amount of volume because the stem is right here. It's very, very short and it immediately goes into the curl. So you get the curl closest to your root, but also the stem is pointing up 
and that gives you the most volume. Next, you have half base. And for half base, you're just gonna go straight up or straight to the sides, basically straight out. Imagine your hair is a chia pet and go that way. Then you roll it up and the roller is going to be sitting half on the section that we took and half below. That gets you half the volume. <laughs> the stem is a little bit longer, so the curl starts a little further away from the scalp and it's not as over-directed or as straight up, so it's going to have a little bit less. That's kind of your good option for some lift without max lift. And the final version is off base. And for that one, you make an acute angle. So if you have a side section here, the section would actually be pointed downwards at a 45 degree angle, and then you would roll it up. Or if you were going straight back, it would be going backwards at a 45 degree angle, basically the opposite of on base. And that will have it sit directly under or behind the section that you took to curl your hair. That is going to be the least amount of volume and also the longest amount of space between the root and the curl. So if you're doing some really, really tight curls, you wanna keep that in mind because you might end up with a really big straight piece and then little tiny curls might not be the goal. Whereas if you're doing something that's a lot looser and you don't quite want as much volume, that could be a really, really good option. To condense all of the base placement in case that's confusing and overwhelming, Basically, the higher you lift your hair before you wrap it, the more volume you get. The lower you wrap it, the less you get. So if you're putting your roller in horizontally like this and you take your hair out to here and then wrap it up, it's gonna be low volume. If you take it out to here and then wrap it up, it's gonna be big volume. And there you go, there's your terminology and technique lesson. I hope that helps a little bit. My whole goal with including that is the whole like, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You teach a man to fish, he eats forever or whatever. I feel like if I teach you the ideas behind using rollers, you can then play with it yourself. And it might even help you to troubleshoot as well as you're going forward with this and learning how to use your rollers. In even more of that effort, let's talk about how to avoid some common problems. And here I'm gonna be answering the questions that you guys ask me on Instagram. All right, so I had a bunch of people asking about hair getting stuck in the roller. This is a really big thing. It even happens with round brushes as well. So let's just talk about some best practices, what to do, what to avoid. My first tip is that you never want to pick a roller that's going to have to rotate several times to encompass all of your hair. For example, if I was to take this and wrap this up in my hair, it would take five to eight rotations. If I was to put this in Anna Laura's hair, closer to like 15, and that just creates so much room for error and things getting stuck. Whereas if you take something a little bit bigger, it's so easy to get this in and out. So I recommend for everybody, unless your hair is quite short, Stay with an inch or wider, and that's just gonna help everything. Next, never take a section of hair larger than your roller. That means this is your measuring stick. When you stick it down on your head, your section should never be any wider or longer than your roller. The reason for that is one, so you have the correct amount of hair on your roller, but two, to keep everything really clean. Because if you have hair that's attaching from other places and getting stuck in other areas of the roller, when you go to unravel it, it's gonna get stuck and it might even get tangled and hard or impossible to remove. So keeping it clean and just very tidy helps everything to be a lot easier. Next, always clip your rollers in place because over time they do start to sag. And so even if it's perfectly placed here and it starts to relax a little bit, it's gonna start bumping into the rollers here and getting stuck to this hair. And this roller is gonna get stuck to this hair. It's gonna be a bumper car effect of tangles. So I recommend just getting these little duckbill clips. You can get so many of them for so little dollars. And you just clip the roller to the hair underneath it and you're good to go. It's very, very quick, very, very easy saves you from a lot of headache. Next, I do recommend a hair oil either while your hair is damp or just before doing this, just because it makes your hair a little bit more slippery and less likely to get caught and tangled in the Velcro. Another thing that I find very important to remember is to wrap lightly. That means that you're gonna get your hair around the roller, but you're not going to be like pulling away from your head and making it as tight as you possibly can. You do that with a wet set when your hair is wet and then you're drying it in rollers. But if you do it with the Velcro, you're going to be netting your hair in with the Velcro and it's a lot harder to take it back out afterwards. So wrap lightly. 
I don't know why I need to say this, but don't sleep in them. I heard people talking about and recommending sleeping in them. That sounds like a bad idea. I'm a messy sleeper. I would have no hair by the next day. There would be a viral story about me and the six hairstylists it took to remove the Velcro rollers from my head. I just don't recommend it. Consider getting trims. If you find that there are a lot of tangles, especially at the ends, just consider getting a trim. I think that can really, really help just in general. But the more wispy the hair, the easier it is to get caught and tangled in the Velcro rollers. And that leads me to my last tip, which is if you do have very fine sparse hair, you might find that these just hold way too hard for you because your little hairs are gonna get netted in there really, really well because there's not like a bunch of them to coat each roller. And that can cause them to be a little bit more stuck there. And so for you, I would say instead of a Velcro roller, any other roller that sounds easy will work in the same way that a Velcro roller does. So if you have a favorite that's like a sponge roller or a sleep styler or flexi rods or socks or anything like that that you can just set your hair into cool, that'll work. So if the Velcro rollers don't work for you, just pick up a different roller and that's totally okay. And then the next big category people wanted to know about were frizzy and snarly ends. I finally figured out what was causing them on myself. Well, first of all, I needed a haircut, slash still need a haircut. But next, I was using these Velcro rollers as kind of a brush at the end of my hair to like go through like this and catch all the little hairs, just like really getting them in there. And when you do that, you get each of your little tiny hairs into the zigzags of the Velcro and create frizz because it creates these little tiny zigzags in your hair. And so they're gonna be a little bit more like fluffy and kind of splayed out because they're not set smoothly. That was a mind blowing moment for me. So these are my ends after using the Velcro rollers today and I feel like they're doing just fine. So the trick that I have learned is that you're going to take your section that you're gonna wrap up and you've got your ends right here. Instead of going right here with the roller, you're going to go back so that there's about an inch or two of overhang and then just kind of flip this around. Just kind of whoop, just get it on there. Don't like mash it in, just place it gently on and then roll gently up. And then when you go to take it down, it's a lot easier. You don't get as much of that sound, which I hate, and the ends look a lot nicer. Here's another tip for the tangling and the snarling. Before you unroll your roller, always look for hanger honors and remove them and then it comes out nicely. And I would like to reiterate that moisturizing your hair is going to help with the way that your ends look no matter what. Okay, wow, we covered a whole lot of information just then. Feel free to go back and revisit that section as many times as you need. I think it's really helpful in this whole like learning how to use rollers process. But now I wanna show you a few different ways to set your rollers or a few different roller patterns. This is just ways that you can put the rollers on your head to get a specific effect. And this should give you a good starting point to play around with. And then hopefully the information that I already gave you will help you to troubleshoot and make it your own. So. Let's get into the first roller set. Welcome to Unstyled Hair Kaylee. Let's show you how to create the hair that I've been wearing so far in this video. So this first roller set option is going to be for your kind of traditional blowout look. We're gonna go for the flips, we're gonna go for the volume, all the stuff. And one way I'm gonna make it a little bit more modern, especially for my kind of medium hair, is to go a little bit larger with the rollers. That's gonna give me more of like a straight and bumped under look versus a very like fluffy curled look. But honestly, that comes down to everybody's personal preference and hair type. So I recommend buying a set of rollers of different sizes so you can play around with what works for your hair. That being said, I will be using these guys today. He he he. I'm gonna guess this is like one and a half inch. I will measure it and let you know. Here. So the first thing we're gonna do is our mohawk section and this is going to go straight across the top of our head. That is true no matter where you part your hair because the whole idea is that it's just kind of like flippable and movable. It's not really based off of any specific part line. And unless you part your hair just really far to the side, your part should be encompassed by this section. So let's take our handy little roller, stick her right there, and we wanna make sure that we're taking a section that is just a little bit narrower than the roller. So it's gonna be here on this side and here on this side. Move her out of the way. And then take that line all the way back. Let's temporarily secure this. And now we're gonna get all this hair out of the way. And this is kind of like training wheels almost. And what I mean by that is that it just makes everything easier. 
it keeps you from accidentally grabbing a section of hair you didn't mean to and it keeps everything nice and clean. Perhaps in time, with enough experience, you won't need it, but just until then, this is helpful. Okay, now we can let this section down and we're ready for our first row. I'm going to be using the one inch Kristen S curling iron for this. You could go a little larger if you want a larger curl. I'm kind of using the combination of the size of the curling iron and the size of the roller to get the look I'm going for. And I've already applied my heat protectant. This is the Unite Silky Smooth Heat Activator. This is my first time using it. We'll see how it goes. All right, so this is gonna be our whole row of rollers, and I think I can get three in this section. So you just wanna take a look at your roller and kind of hold it up, remember about how big it is, and take a section about that wide, and that's what we're gonna start with. And I'm clipping everything else out of the way again just because it's so much easier. All of these on top are going to be on base, so we're gonna put this at our unicorn horn position and begin curling away from the face. You can use whatever curling device works for you, whether that's a wand, a iron with a clip, a straightener, a time iron. All right, and once that's come off, we're ready to put it on the roller. Mine is staying very nicely. It's impressive. As we've already covered, you place about an inch from the ends, flip the ends around, and roll it down gently. I'm gonna do it one more time because I didn't have that unicorn horn placement quite right. There we go. And see how it sits directly on the base? That's how we want it. Quick, clip it in place, we don't want it to move. Fun fact, that is also how you can style your curtain bangs or long face framing layers with a roller. So now we're just gonna continue that through the rest of this section. Alrighty, so now you have the rest of your hair down, let's give it a quick brush. You always wanna make sure your sections are brushed and ready to go. Now we're gonna be going in horizontal sections around our mohawk. Horizontal meaning that the roller is placed horizontally. So you wanna take a section as wide as the roller you're using. So here's mine. I'm gonna take my section all the way down here, all the way across my head. And you know, when I'm describing it in detail, it sounds like a lot. I think anytime you describe something in detail, it sounds like a lot, but it's not that deep. <laughs> Don't get scared, stick with me. So I am temporarily clipping these up as well because we are once again going to training wheels the bottom half. And now we'll let these guys down and we're ready to start rolling. So remember, we want our base to be the size of the roller. So we already have the width figured out. Let's figure out the length. You're just gonna pop it up to your head. And remember that we wanna go slightly inside of the borders of the roller. So take your section accordingly, and you're going to curl either away or toward your face, whichever direction you prefer, and then wrap it onto the roller horizontally. I'm going to do these at half base, so I'm gonna be sticking my hair out straight from my head and then rolling it up. So the bottom of my base is right here, which is about halfway between the roller, which means it is perfectly half base. We've got the base and it's halfway off of it. And I'm just gonna continue doing this around the whole section, curling away from my face because that is my preference. Okay, we have done the mohawk layer, we have done the horizontal layer, now you can let your hair down and make some decisions. <laughs> some of you guys with shorter hair are not gonna have quite enough hair to put on a roller, so you can heat style it however you want to get it close to the rest of the texture that you're making. So maybe use a flat iron to get a little bit of a wave in there, or just use your curling iron to just kind of gently arc the hair. For shoulder to collarbone length, it's a little bit more up to you. You can either just style the hair like the rest of the hair and leave this down, I think that could really be an option, especially for shoulder length hair. But you also have the option to use the Velcro rollers on this section as well. And that's just gonna add more fullness and more volume and more bend. So I would say play around with it both ways and see what looks best on your hair. For me, I have found that I kind of like the bottom section put onto rollers now that my hair is this length. But when it was shorter, I don't think I would have bothered with it. So because I am doing this section, let's go ahead and take another horizontal layer around the head. I'm gonna clip this up for a second and training wheels the rest. I think it's time for a ponytail holder on this one. Let's find one. Haha. -ha. And never more than one step from a hair tie. And repeat this layer again on this one. I also need to caution you guys about using the curling iron close to your face because if you're not careful, this is what happens. <laughs> See how that's perfectly in line with this roller? Not a coincidence. I was trying to hold the iron at an angle that I don't normally do and I whacked myself in the face. Okay, I just have a little bit of hair left and honestly, I'm done. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just use my curling iron like a flat iron 
And I'm just gonna take this whole section because my hair is already pretty straight and I'm just going to curve it slightly and run it over my hair. So this is what you would do if you had just very, very little hair left after the first row. You just go in and create whatever texture you're creating with the Velcro rollers. Now I just wait for this to cool and I can show you the results. Okay, I've taken my quick break. I'm ready to take these out. You want to take these out in the order that you put them in, roughly. So, bottom section first. Oh, hello! That is more of a curl than I was expecting. That's fun. Okay, I might have to touch up my bottom section. Okay, here's an important note. When you take the clip out, before you try to unroll the roller, just kind of pick it up from the base and make sure that there's nothing hanging on underneath. And if there is, just kind of flick it away. And that way you can unroll it nicely sometimes whole chunks get stuck to the bottom or the side and then you've got multiple areas of hair that are stuck and that can be one of the things that causes that kind of traffic jam when you're trying to get the roller off the hair so just always do the little just click it out of the base before you unroll it put these guys down okay and now we must fluff and style because we're not quite there yet so i'm just gonna take my head back and shake and then depending on what situation you've got when you flip your head back, you can use your fingers to tame or you can use a brush. Whichever way. Okay, wow. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and curl this underside. Okay, so this is the uh, unexpected final results. Guys, I really love how this turned out. It is a lot more curly than I expected. I'm going to completely blame slash think Unite for that. I just use this whole line of uh, silky smooth that's supposed to have like a heat activated polymer in it that helps your hair to hold its style better. And uh, I think it did. So this is one of the ways that this horizontal set can turn out, but it's not what I wanted to show you guys. So I'm gonna redo it real quick with a little bit bigger rollers and curling iron. And let me just show you guys kind of the straighter but still voluminous modern version. We're going for like Rosie Huntington Whiteley here that you could get. So I'm basically just gonna repeat everything I just did, just bigger and therefore looser, and I will show you the results. There we go. See, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of like a mostly straight, slightly curved look. I love this because it looks like I'm really good with a round brush and I'm not, at least on my own self. It's too much work. This just gives me that like really great lift and curl and swoosh without being, you know, just a whole, whole lot. And I'm really liking that. But now we're gonna have Anna Laura show you how you could do this on long hair in a way that's just really, really easy and quick, but doesn't give you too much volume. So for Anna Laura, we're actually gonna start off the exact same way. You're gonna be doing your mohawk section off of your part. So you wanna measure the width of your roller and then go all the way back, temporarily secure that, and then get everything else out of the way, drop your section down, and then you can start putting in the rollers. You're gonna curl away from your face and then roll them back up and clip them to cool. For the next section, you're going to measure out the width of your roller all the way around your mohawk section, and then you're going to temporarily clip that section up, get everything else out of the way, drop it down, you're ready to curl. Then you're gonna curl away from your face, and when you wrap up the roller, you're gonna actually wrap it so that the end goes upwards, and you're gonna roll it up so that the hair that's coming from your head is on the underside of the roller. That way you're not creating a whole lot of extra volume, but the stem of your curl isn't too long. So the curl starts right next to your head. You're gonna do that all the way around and then repeat that with one more row and that should be all of your hair done. I especially love this on long hair because you get the extra width here. Yeah. So it just adds tons of fullness. I love it. Yeah. So there's Anna Laura's look, we love. Now I wanna show you guys how to do this with a vertical roller set because with the horizontal rollers, we get this really, really distinct kind of like 45 degree angle bend in the curls. With a vertical one, you're gonna get it a little bit more elongated. So that's gonna look a little bit more lived in and a little bit more natural. And I just wanna give you guys that option as well. So let's cut to yesterday when I filmed that and I will show you how it's done. Alrighty, here we go. For our less flippy and high and just version of a roller set, I wanna show you guys something with vertical roller placement. Now, what does that mean? It means that we went in like this around our mohawk before, that's a horizontal placement. When you go in vertically, it mimics a little bit more of the way we typically hold our irons and style our hair, but setting it on a roller gives it more chance for bounce 
and a little bit more of just swishy volume. So the goal for this set is really just cascading, beautiful, swishy hair. I'm gonna make this length of hair cascade as much as possible, and for those of you guys with longer hair, this is gonna really add a lot of like body and fullness and swishiness. So you're essentially going to replicate that mohawk section that we did before, right on your hairline. And again, you want it to be the size or slightly smaller than your roller. Then you're gonna curl this section, this lovely side part. You're gonna curl this section away from your face, however is most comfortable for you to do that. Get as close to the roots as you can safely. And then once that's done, you're gonna pull the hair forward to that unicorn horn position and wrap it back down so that it's an on-base roller and clip it in place. But now let's move on to that vertical sectioning, shall we? So for this, we're gonna be splitting our hair in half horizontally. So we're just gonna go about halfway down the head, temporarily clip up the top half. So bottom section is in a ponytail, you let down the top section. So for our vertical sections, you want your section to be longer than it is wide, the shape of a rectangle. <laughs> so because it's gonna be long, you're gonna feel like you're taking really skinny sections to make that rectangle happen, like so. Now this is longer than the roller, and that is okay in this situation because we're not placing it fully on base, so it's not gonna end up snarling and snagging with the base hair. So you're gonna take your section and curl away from the face. Then you're gonna take your roller, place it a couple inches from the ends, wrap the ends around gently, and then start rolling it up with the opening of the roller facing upward. And once it's sitting on your head, clip it in place. Now we're gonna take our next section. So depending on how long your hair is, you may or may not really need to do a lot down here. <laughs> if your hair is much shorter than mine, like right around here, you might need to go smaller with the roller because that way it will give you more of that kind of wave effect. Whereas in the last one that we did, we were going for more of like a full, kind of like straight, slightly curled look. This one, you're kind of getting more of a wave look. So I would say go a little bit smaller with that and then do whatever styling you can with your curling iron and don't worry about the rollers for here. The next option from there is to just do the curls and then not set them with the rollers, just do your curls with the curling iron. That could be really good for, you know, short to medium here, super easy. Or if you want to, you can go ahead and use the Velcro rollers, whichever one you want. I will show you one side with and one side without so you can get an idea of the difference gonna make this side the without. This side is perfectly cool, and we're just gonna let this side cool while I reveal this. I am impatient to see. And now we let down the curtain bangs. Oh, part them down the middle, and then we're going to tame them a bit. For me, I have to brush and curve the bangs into the right side, then grab a creaseless clip, get the bangs where I want them to sit, and put them there. It also just really helps with getting them even looking and then just saying like, stay. Let's just use this opportunity to give a little hairspray. I've got the Matrix Oil Wonders Volume Rose. It's a nice lightweight hairspray. It smells like roses. Then just a bit of the Bumble and Bumble Invisible Oil to break up the cast. And we'll take these out and pray. All right, there you go. That is our shorter slash medium hair version. I love it. I didn't do any before posing shots, but let's just get a quick little before up so we can see what my hair looks like. We've got more volume. We've got more swish. She feels luscious. And you don't need length to have luscious hair. We love. I do think I like the side with the rollers all the way down better than the other side. That's on me. Play around at home, see which one you like better. <laughs> For the long hair version, it starts exactly the same. You're gonna have your little mohawk bang section basically right over wherever your part is. You're going to wrap that back away from your face and clip it's cool. I do feel like this top section is probably going to take the longest because you're gonna have the most hair in it. Mm. So if you start to feel fatigued and like this is not worth it, just know that this is this is it. You know, this is the part that you came for. This is the part to breathe through. Whatever they say in Soul Cycle, you've got this. Next, you're gonna let the rest of your hair down and basically do the same thing again. You don't have to get this one as close to the root. They can just hang down if you want, but basically just vertical curls. And now you're just gonna let the roller sit until everything is cool and then you can take them out. Just like that, we're cool. Oh, 
Wow. Generally, you get all that fullness right here. I love it. And all the curl, but without the the flips, mm -hmm. you know? And that has been my video on how to use Velcro rollers. I hope this was good. I really tried to jam pack it with information. I hope it wasn't too much. You guys can let me know below. I can always adjust. I just love getting to nerd out and teach you guys about like the hair techniques, like what you actually learn in hair school so that you have that opportunity to be able to actually like do your hair at home and know what you're doing. So even if it felt overwhelming, I hope it was super duper helpful. Let me know what you guys would like to learn more about in the comments down below. I am always getting ideas for new videos from y'all's comments. So if you guys have an idea, leave it below. I'd love to see it. But I think that is going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It helps support my channel. And uh, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button to join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee Melissa. And all y'all can hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video which is Fridays, sometimes additionally on Wednesday. But that is it for today. Whether you're old or new or a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the look. If I go missing, there won't be a trail of breadcrumbs. There will be a trail of bobby pins and hair ties. That's wishy. Look at that Esker. Wee, wee, wee. I like how symmetrical this is. Back. Flow together, guys, flow.